Hi guys, this is MJ. Welcome to the Rustic Maple Design family. Today we're going to be making some spring bunnies out of wood. So I started with a three quarter inch wood because I want the bunny rabbit to stand up. I don't want it on a platform. I made a template out of some thick paper and just drew out a bunny rabbit form. You can draw it any way that you want. Basically drew that out, put it on the wood, and then I cut it out with a jigsaw. I basically have two that we're gonna work on today and we're going to stencil them and make them look more springtime. So you need to have a scraper. We're going to use joint compound. And then whatever stencil you choose. So a stencil of your choice. And then I'll have all these things in the links below. Now the stencil that I have does not cover the entire bunny rabbit, but I really like it, so I'm going to use it. If you don't even have a stencil, get one that covers your whole project. That would be smarter. This will take a little bit, little bit longer, but that's okay. So I'll just kind of position your stencil. If it's like mine and it doesn't cover the entire bunny rabbit, put the stencil over the majority of it because we're gonna have to go back and do the other parts that aren't covered and you'll understand that. So I'm just kind of looking to make sure the stencil's covering most of the rabbit. Just get it lined up. And then we're gonna be adding some joint compound to that. And we're gonna give it some dimension. And then we're gonna be able to paint it and make it look really cute. So we're just using normal wall joint compound. Just kind of stir it up if you haven't used it for a while. Mine's a little bit wet. We're just gonna apply that with the scraper. And I don't have tape on my rabbit, so you do wanna hold it with your fingers with a hand that you're not using to, to apply the joint compound. Keep it in place so that it doesn't move around. So be ready for that. Kind of hold it in place and figure out where you want it. And this will be a bit messy, so just be ready for that as well. So I'm applying a pretty good amount. Just kind of plop it on there. Now here's where you need to decide how thick do you want it. Um, you can make it as thin to where you can see the actual design of the stencil if you want to. I'm making mine a little thicker because I want more dimension. So as you see me spreading the joint compound around, I'm basically making it flat, but I'm also making it kind of thick to where I don't see the pattern underneath. And you do want to keep in mind, if you're like me and your stencil's a little bit small, how thick you're doing it because you're going to have to do that once it dries and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Once it dries and you want to do the rest of the bunny rabbit. Now one thing you want to do too is you want to make sure that you're covering all the wood spots and it is going to be messy and that's fine. And you also want to make sure that as you're flattening out the joint compound, I think we naturally have a tendency to have that middle section a little bit higher than our edges. So kind of watch how I do it. You're basically, when I'm starting to flatten this out, I'm going from the midsection and I'm kind of going outward instead of from the edges going inward. And that will kind of level that to where once the uh, stencil is lifted up, the joint compounds pretty even all the way throughout the body of the bunny rabbit. So just fill it all in, smooth it, pay attention to what depth you're doing, unless you happen to have a stencil. But even then, we're going to be stenciling both sides of both bunny rabbits, so you do want them to match. So kind of pay attention to whatever depth you've decided you want for that joint compound. So see how I'm kind of leveling it? I'm kind of going from midsection and out to the edges. Midsection, out to the edges and that will make it a little bit more level. Now, as you're taking this off, you wanna be very careful and you wanna take it from the top end and you're going to lift up and you're going to do it slowly. It's not a race, just do it slowly. Be very careful because there's a lot of joint compound on there. So gently lift it up. See how it's just kind of pulling away and that's fine. Gently lift it and then get it up out of there. Now see how cute the pattern is? I like that. This is what I'm looking for. Now there's going to be a lot of joint compound on the actual stencil still, so we're gonna put the extra, use the scraper and just scrape it back into the container. But do you see how my rabbit doesn't have the stencil on the face? 
I'm going to have to go back and do that and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But right now we're going on the edges because again, it's very messy. Take the edge, the, the joint compound that's gone on the edges and lift upward, straight up so that you don't mess up your pattern. So see how I'm going straight up with my finger and that way you don't mess up the pattern that's there. And you're just getting some of that excess off and we'll clean off the rest of it later. So just get the majority of it. And again, your stencil is going to be full of joint compounds, so don't waste it. Just scrape it off and put it in the container. All right, now the bunny rabbit's dry. We're coming back and I'm going to show you if you have a stencil like me that doesn't take, doesn't cover the entire project. If you haven't used a stencil before, there's a pattern on a stencil. So you basically go from one part of that pattern. And again, we're going to be applying this joint compound. So just be ready for that. I'm going to show you as we're doing it. I'm going to turn the um, rabbit around and we're going to look at the stencil pattern. I'm going to match it up. So I'm looking where the stencil is, matching it up. And as I do that, I find where it's laying. And there I've matched it. Now there's a pattern on the edge. There's about three different spots and see how I'm a putting that stencil right into those three joint compound areas already. That's where the pattern ends and where it's going to continue on as I put more on its face. So make sure that you're following a pattern. Don't just randomly add it. Make sure you're following the existing pattern or whatever stencil you're using if it doesn't cover it like mine doesn't. So do the same thing. Just apply it and you want to do the same depth, remember. So just gently hold it with your hand, otherwise it'll move around on you. And just apply it over all the wood just like you did with the body. And remember too, the middle always seems to go into a higher amount of joint compounds, so make sure you're going from the middle out to the edges to level that out. See, I have it everywhere, all the wood's covered, so I'm ready to just flatten it. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna take this off gently. I'm gonna hold it with my hand at the bottom as I'm taking this off, so kind of watch as I'm doing that because you don't wanna mess up the pattern. And if you happen to mess it up, just scrape the wet joint compound and do it again because we're going to be painting over it anyway. So I'm pretty satisfied with where I'm at. We're going to lift up slowly. Oh, look how cute it looks. And then we're going to clean off the edges and remember we're going to go in an upward because we don't want to mess up the pattern. And there she goes. Now I do have a little bit of the foot left that I have to do and I'll go back and do that. But I'm gonna do some of the rest of that and all the other sides and the other bunny rabbit behind the scenes real quick. And then we'll be right back. Make sure that with the joint compound, I usually rinse it off in the sink and then I just let it dry in the shower. All right, we are back. Now I've done both sides. I am ready uh, to do the next step. So I've done the side, the other side of both rabbits and see how I've covered the entire rabbit. And that's all you need to do. Wait for it to completely dry. Make sure it's totally dry before we do this next step. And then again, just clean your, your stencil in the sink, put it in your shower, leave it in there to dry while you're doing the next step. Okay, now before we do anything else, I took a paper towel and a Q-tip. I went in the edges with the Q-tip and a toothpick even, and I wiped off all the edges with the paper towel, just damp after it was dry. And then that way you don't mess up your pattern at all. So just kind of get that cleaned up. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna sand because there's a lot of prickly spots. So joint compound does not dry smooth. So we're gonna take sandpaper and I'm taking 220 grit. And we're gonna take this little, it's just a, use a piece of scrap wood, a really small piece of scrap. So use your 220 because you want to be very light and do this gently because you don't want to break off the joint compound. You just basically want to get um, the pokey tips 
because if you touch it, you, you'll feel like it kind of pokes your skin quite a bit. So it's a little bit messy. You can put what you need to. I got a paper towel for me because it's going to be messy and I want to clean it up afterwards. And I am just lightly going to sand and feel where those pokey spots are. And I'm just leveling out the joint compound and just do that all over the rabbit. Okay, we are ready now. We're going to, I'm going to use Annie Sloan chalk paint. It's her old white. And we're going to cover the rabbits everywhere. Both sides, in between. And then we're going to use these two colors, the yellow and the blue of the Modern Masters front door paint. And I'm going to gently apply that to give it some dimension. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to use a chip brush because I don't care about chip brushes that much. So this is kind of, uh, it's got a lot of texture on it. So we're gonna get in there. I want you to make sure that when you're painting this, you only need to have one coat. So I'll use the two extra brushes for the colors and not separate them, or separate them. Um, but we're gonna just use this chip brush. We're gonna clean off the extra dry joint compound that's on there from our sanding. Clean off both sides to prep for painting. Okay, we're pretty good to go now. So what we're gonna do is they're wiped down, we're getting ready to put on the Annie Sloan chalk paint. And just apply that. Now make sure that you're getting into the crevices and you kinda wanna get it from different angles to make sure that you're getting it. I'm using a smaller brush for the crevices. So make sure that you're getting the paint, look at it in all directions, that you've got all the crevices covered. Are these not cute? Now you could leave them like this. I like them, I think they look really cute. But I wanna have some color. If you wanna leave them white, leave them white. We're gonna let these dry. Okay, dry. Now we are ready to put on the colors. Again, I'm using Modern Masters front door. I love these colors. Modern Masters paints are awesome. Their colors are so vibrant and they last forever. I forget the names of these two, but I'll have them in the link below along with everything else, but it's either Tranquility or Serene. So we basically have yellow and blue. We're gonna use, we've already used the um, Annie Sloan chalk paint, the old white. All we needed was one coat, so we're good with that. And now's the time to apply the colors. I have two rabbits. I'm going to do both of them, one side blue and the other side yellow. And then you'll see when I have like the little tie and everything on it later on around its neck that you can use it and you can intertwine and change the colors if you want. So look at that depth. Is that not pretty? Look at that pattern. All right, now as we're gonna apply the colors, it's like stenciling. We're gonna go sideways, 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 very light. So if you have stenciled before or you have not, less paint is better. So we're gonna use my old paper plates. We're gonna do the blue first. Less is more, so don't put very much on the end. Very little, see how very little I have? Then you're gonna use the paper plate and you're just gonna get the excess off because again, it's like stenciling. You wanna put it on a little bit at a time. You can always go back and put more. So go sideways with your brush and just go against the pattern. Now you're not going into the actual wood of the rabbit. So you're doing just really that raised joint compound pattern that we made with that damask stencil. And that's what you're coloring. Okay, now I've applied the blue. If you've noticed, I only used one brush worth of paint. So you don't have to use much. And I went in all different directions, so pay attention to that as well because you are gonna be looking at that rabbit if it's wherever it is on the decor, like on a shelf or whatever. You're gonna be looking at it from different directions. So color it in from different directions. Go as light or as dark as you prefer. And this is where you can kind of design it for yourself. And if you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up, we'd appreciate it. And if you'd love to subscribe, we'd appreciate that too. And if you have any comments, please leave some below. All right, now there's the blue. 
We basically are doing blue on, like I said, one side of the rabbit. So we'll get the second one done and then we're going to do the yellow. The way that I did it too is pay attention to your rabbits because I'm having them face each other. So one side's going to be blue as they're facing each other and the other rabbit's going to be yellow and then opposite. Uh, and you'll see that at the end of the video. So make sure you're not painting them on the wrong side. Just pay attention to that as well. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing with the yellow. And there we go, see how we do the opposite. One's yellow, one's blue. All right, so we've got the yellow on one side and the blue on the other. And we're gonna do the edges of them now. So when you do that part, you are gonna do a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. You're just gonna gently, gently swipe it. Barely any color, because we don't want it real pronounced. So barely any color. And just see how I'm just gently stroking the edging. And just do that with both colors. All right, now behind the scenes too, I'm going to be using a poly acrylic. I'm gonna use Minwax, I'll have that in the link below, and it's gonna be a clear mat. And that's to protect it so that the joint compound doesn't flake off and dry out. It protects it so that it's sealed, and then you don't have to worry about it, and it's gonna last for years. Is that not cute? I love this, it's really cute. Also, we'll be having these for sale on our Etsy shop which is Rustic Maple Design. So if you'd like to see them there, that'd be great. Now I'm going to um, put a tail on it and a little bit of a twine wrapped around the neck and here we go. Now I did the twine, I just basically did like four strands about probably 25 inches long and I just made a bow tie around both of them. And I made a cute little fuzzy tail and I hot glued that on. So see how they're opposites? yellow and blue sides so you can switch them around if you decide to just buy one then you can have both colors that's the twine i use it's pretty thin but it makes a cute little bow and you can switch that bow to both sides it doesn't have to stay on one side you can switch it over to the other depending on what color you decide i'm going to show you real quick how to make the tail super easy super quick so you just get some fuzzy yarn again this is the hobby lobby and i'll put it on the link below just take a pair of scissors I want a small tail, so we're just gonna wrap it around my two fingers twice, and that's it. Now cut that off. Keep a hold of it though, you don't wanna lose it. So keep that shape. Now grab it in the middle with your fingers and pinch it, and keep a hold of it and keep it pinched. Now you're gonna cut six inches more of the yarn. Lay that down, and we're gonna put that and place it right in the middle, and we're just gonna tie it. really tight and now knot it so tie it one more time keep it in place don't cut these yet because we're going to just use that to hold while we're shaping the ball okay so keep those two strands in your hand easier to hold on to grab your scissors and there's going to be a couple little loops at the end just go ahead and cut those Okay, now it's gonna look a little weird at first, but basically you wanna shape it into a ball and now you're just trimming, so don't over trim. Take your time and slowly take little pieces until it turns into the tail form that you like. And it's gonna shed like crazy. And that's pretty much it. You're just getting it to kind of fluff it with your fingers because there'll be some strays here and there. Get those cut off. Make it look like the ball that you want and once you're satisfied, Leave it, and then you're going to cut off that excess that you've held on to. Cut that off, and that's where you're gonna apply the hot glue, and then you're just gonna stick that on your bunny rabbit like I did, close to its butt. <laughs> Isn't that cute? These really turned out cute. I like them because they can stand alone, which is awesome. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please give it a thumbs up. We would appreciate it. And then check us out at our Rustic Maple Design shop on Etsy. Thanks for watching.